I've been learning uh, a lot about uh, the development of family medicine here in India and in Sri Lanka now too, uh, and uh, have benefited from that. Uh, particularly, uh, I've been impressed by both the skills and the enthusiasm that people are demonstrating in, in supporting family medicine. So I'd like to tell you a bit about uh, a typical family medicine academic department in Canada. Um, one of the important features uh, about the context of family medicine and departments of family medicine in Canada is that they're all part of universities, integral parts of universities. There are 17 faculties of medicine uh, in the 17 larger universities across Canada, um, and each of them has a department of family medicine. Uh, Canada is a country of about 30 million people, also uh, tiny in comparison uh, to uh, your experience here in, in India. Um, and, and that's uh, part of uh, 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 our sense of admiration for the task that, uh, that you're undertaking in promoting family medicine here is, is the, uh, the scaling up of something that we do on a very small scale. Uh, you have a very large uh, setting to uh, to 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 operate in here. Um, another important part of the context for departments of family medicine in Canada is the uh, College of Family Physicians of Canada, which is a strong organization, a voluntary organization of national organization of family doctors, uh, and uh, uh, 35,000 family doctors in Canada. 50% of the doctors in Canada are family doctors, 50% are uh, other specialties. Uh, so family medicine is a very well established part of the Canadian healthcare system. Um, this national organization uh, has a number of responsibilities uh, and it particularly important for departments of family medicine. The College of Family Physicians of Canada accredits postgraduate or residency training programs and provides guidelines for those programs. Uh, and in addition, the college, the National College, certifies family physicians as being ready for practice as family physicians. And in Canada, all general practitioners uh, who want to get licenses to practice in Canada have to have certification from the College of Family Physicians of Canada uh, in order to get a license to practice as a, as a family doctor or as a GP. So uh, both the universities uh, and all the structure and support that a university implies and this national college of family physicians, those are both important parts of the context uh, of departments of family medicine in, in Canada. Um, Like the faculties of medicine in which they're a part, departments of family medicine are organized around three main goals or activities, uh, education, research, and uh, service, clinical service. Um, with respect to education, uh, departments of family medicine serve several uh, different types of learners. Uh, importantly, they uh, run uh, for family medicine residents, the postgraduate education programs in family medicine. Uh, that's after medical school and it's a two-year program in Canada. Um, uh, 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 there are a small number of uh, family medicine residents who go on and do an optional third year, but, but the core of training for family physicians in Canada is a two-year program. Uh, and each department of family medicine in the 17 universities would have between 50 to 150 to, uh, family medicine residents per year in those two years. Uh, so between 100 and 300 residents uh, to provide a, a family medicine program for uh, in any one year. Um, uh, so there are large numbers of, of residents and large numbers of teachers uh, and others to support uh, the teaching program in a department of family medicine. Uh, it's not just postgraduate education, though, of course, uh, departments of family medicine are heavily involved in uh, undergraduate or medical school education. Uh, in Canada, most people, uh, before they enter medical school, have an undergraduate degree, 
uh, a three or four year bachelor's degree. Many have masters, a few have PhDs before they enter a four year medical school program. Uh, but during that four years of medical school, the Department of Family Medicine plays a big role in all of the years, uh, both the, what we call the pre-clinical years, the first two years, and the second two years, uh, the clinical years, where, uh, where there's a lot of clinical exposure, less theory and more clinical work. And, and uh, teachers from the Department of Family Medicine are involved all the way through the undergraduate curriculum. Um, the uh, departments of family medicine are also involved in continuing medical education for practicing physicians in the community. They put on programs, uh, uh, both uh, uh, in-person programs and distance learning programs. Uh, some of the departments of family medicine run graduate programs, master's programs, uh, yielding a master's of an education or master's of science. They might be in clinical topics or educational topics or research methodology, that sort of thing. And that may come under the Department of Family Medicine in association with the School of Graduate Studies in the university. Um, some of the departments of family medicine in Canada uh, are allied with community or, or public health programs and uh, there are joint programs where people learn to be family doctors and uh, acquire public health or community medicine uh, degrees as well so that they're well suited to uh, bridge the uh, divide between primary care and public health and play a role in our healthcare system with that expertise. So education for all those different uh, groups of people is a core and important part of a typical family medicine department in, in, uh, in Canada. Um, research is an important part as well. Uh, faculty who are full-time faculty uh, members uh, of departments of family medicine are expected to have a, a scholarly component, if not an actual research component, to their work. Um, it might be minor or it might be major part of their time depending on what other responsibilities they have for the department. Even community-based teachers, and although we have a core of full-time faculty, uh, um, which uh, there's quite a range depending on the size of the department, uh, maybe between 20 and 100 uh, full-time faculty depending on the size, but in addition, uh, much of our medical education, whether undergraduate or postgraduate, is distributed, as we call it, outside the university center into communities in the region around each university. And uh, so we have a couple of hundred uh, community preceptors who teach our family medicine residents or who take undergraduate medical students for family medicine rotations uh, during their, their undergraduate years. And even those community preceptors are certainly encouraged to have a research component and supported in that if they, if they have that interest. So research is an important part of the function of, of the Departments of Family Medicine. Uh, in fact, Departments of Family Medicine may have, uh, often have formal centers for primary care research as part of their function, a center in the sense that there are uh, additional staff research associates, uh, uh, data analysts, and uh, information technology people, and so on, who support the, uh, the clinicians who do the research. Um, so those kinds of formal centers are part of departments, and many departments lead uh, practice-based networks. So there are networks of family doctors uh, in their own practices, uh, uh, outside the university in the communities uh, who are part of practice-based networks uh, that generate data for research projects that answer questions that are important in, in primary care and family medicine. And uh, departments of family medicine also all often take the lead in organizing those things. And, and research is important for residents as well, and all residents are required to have a research project as part of their training and, and receive support from the department in learning about research methodology and, and having research assistance to help them uh, in their projects. So uh, education research, the third component of most uh, departments of family medicine's activities is service. Um, clinical service to patients. Uh, we provide primary care health services uh, uh, in the academic teaching units which uh, are associated with the department. So the faculty members uh, are family doctors who have practices, uh, general practices, uh, in a location uh, 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 near the university usually, uh, near the hospitals but not in the hospitals. Um, and. Uh, 
our practices serve as teaching practices for both undergraduate students who want to observe what's going on in a family practice and for the family medicine residents who spend a major part of their time uh, with us as well as with the community teachers that I, I mentioned. And so another part of the context for departments of family medicine in Canada is the healthcare system in Canada. Um, uh, and in Canada, physician and hospital services are publicly financed by taxes, uh, by taxpayers, uh, and they're free at the point of service. Uh, so our service to patients is part of that. But most universities, most departments of family medicine have a special interest uh, for underserved populations in their area. Um, and uh, like all countries, we have, we have underserved populations and populations that have difficulty with access to healthcare services and uh, university, Department of Family Medicine, uh, healthcare services are often specifically directed towards, uh, towards those groups. Um, in addition to those three things, education, service, research, sorry, I changed my slide for, for service, um, Departments of Family Medicine are also involved in faculty development, so uh, we support our teachers, both the full-time faculty and the community teachers uh, of our, uh, in Family Medicine in terms of their roles as teachers, uh, as scholars, uh, researchers, and as leaders or, or administrators. Uh, so faculty development is a big part of the activities of, of most departments of Family Medicine. And, Departments of Family Medicine are, are funded uh, and have administrative support uh, also from the government in Canada, uh, both from ministries of education and of health. Uh, medical students pay fees to attend medical school, although it's, uh, their education is highly subsidized uh, in addition uh, by the government. Uh, family medicine residents are paid salaries uh, because of the services they provide as uh, clinicians, uh, although it's under supervision. And research funding comes partly from private, but also from public funding uh, in Canada. I just wanted to briefly say a bit more about postgraduate or residency education, because that's one of the main functions of any Department of Family Medicine in Canada. Um, uh, although we're part of universities, most of the uh, uh, research, or most of the education that is clinical education, so it takes part, it takes place in, in practice situations, uh, whether it's large or small hospitals, in outpatient clinics, in family practice offices, and all of these practice settings would have formal or informal affiliation agreements with the university such that uh, even if they're geographically a long way away, they play a part in the overall curriculum that, uh, and a planned part in the curriculum of the uh, residents who are, uh, may spend time in those settings. Um, there are other people than family doctors who make up the teachers for our residents, the nurses, nurse practitioners, social workers, uh, pharmacists, dietitians, uh, sort of there's, uh, uh, like many other countries, there's a, at the primary care level, there's an interdisciplinary approach to, uh, to education. Um, one of the issues that um, uh, uh, is of interest to departments of family medicine in Canada and to teachers in particular are the changing models of uh, education, uh, the changer, changing paradigms and frameworks that we use to guide our education uh, both at an undergraduate and postgraduate level but particularly for residents. And there are several uh, uh, frameworks uh, that are uh, being are popular and, and being pursued and, and uh, being used in Canada um, and they're, they're listed here. I just wanted to mention them very briefly in the last couple of slides here. Um, one thing is uh, our emphasis these days on competency-based curriculum and, and this is something that other educators will be familiar with that we tend to focus less on, on acquisition of knowledge and more on using knowledge at the residency level. Um, and we tend not to say you need to do a month of this and a month of that and a month of something else in order to become a good family doctor. We say there are competencies that uh, are the things that you have to do in practice. Uh, you have to assess a fever in a child, you have to uh, deliver a baby, you have to uh, uh, do tasks like that when you become a family doctor and it's on those competencies that we're aiming to uh, train you of, of family physicians in Canada. For instance, 
uh, family doctors in Canada all learn to deliver babies, um, uh, although not all of them may include that as part of their, their practice eventually. Continuity in uh, care of patients we know is important in family practice, and continuity in education is important as well. Um, residents follow the same group of patients over a long period of time in order to uh, understand what continuity can provide for them and for their patients in terms of quality of care. And the education process involves continuity, continuity too, in the sense that you can learn uh, different competencies in various different settings but the program is responsible for assessing you that you have that competency at the end. For instance, you can learn to treat uh, a fever in a child in a pediatrics ward or in an emergency department or in a family medicine office, uh, and we make use of all those different settings, but in the end, it's the ability to treat the fever in the child that is the competency that uh, the program is responsible for making sure their residents uh, are, 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 have achieved. Um, there are other frameworks. Uh, we are not just interested in training people who are medical experts, but we're aware that uh, being a, a professional, uh, being a communicator, a collaborator, a manager of resources, a, a health advocate for their patients, being a scholar, having, having critical appraisal abilities, all those other things are important components of uh, being a, a family doctor. And so that's a framework that we use to uh, develop our curriculum and assess our residents by. Um, and and these, this framework, interestingly, for us came from a consultation a number of years ago that involved medical educators, but also there was a large amount of community input into deciding that this, these were the, the broad roles that uh, uh, people expected of, of doctors in general and specifically of, of family doctors. And one thing, another framework that's of interest uh, particularly to residents because they're, they're always uh, 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 a bit in awe at the beginning of the scope of, of uh, general practice in family medicine uh, is uh, a, a framework that involves identifying 99 priority topics. Uh, and, and this was a list that was generated uh, in a consensus sort of iterative way uh, amongst groups of family doctors across Canada, uh, identifying the 99 topics that they felt were the most critical ones to be able to be in, on top of in order to practice effectively as a family doctor. So it's a bit like a list of uh, the index of a textbook of family medicine in some ways, uh, but the development of this list uh, by this consensus approach from practicing physicians was, was an interesting way to, uh, to come at uh, this uh, this kind of uh, definition of of the scope of, of family. A couple practice. of minutes in. Thanks. Yeah, I'm done. Uh, uh, by just uh, sort of summing up and saying that uh, what I've tried to tell you about in terms of uh, uh, the typical family medicine department in Canada is that uh, we carry out education, service, and research functions in the context of universities. Uh, in the context of the Canadian healthcare system and our national organization of family physicians. And, and that, uh, that's a capsule of, of what uh, family medicine departments in Canada are all about. So thanks very much for hearing me out.